Heidi. Hey, Heidi. Hey, Roland. Papa Roland. Hello. We're doing a cross from LA. A bridge from America to Africa. Yes, from here in LA where we're on house lockdown. And uh -huh. we know that the situation in Mozambique is also quite intense. So schools are closed, you. are they? Your schools are closed over there? All schools are closed, primary, secondary, uh, Bible schools, uh, churches. We just multiplied churches because you're allowed to meet with 50 or less. So we just multiplied many, many times under trees and in yards. And we're just um, looking at beautiful Jesus and how he handles things. Oh, we love you guys. We were just excited to meet with you and get some news out and we know you have been praying so much we've been praying on the phone with you and um we just thought this was an opportunity to say hi to everyone that's a lot a lot in california who are locked in their houses at the moment who are um on lockdown on this lockdown and across Schools a lot closed. of places around the world are, are our um, boys are doing school online as we're talking right now yes Izzy and Sylvia are online. We're out the front of our house. We still we we have so, God, praise God. We so feel for you. We we really have so much compassion and feeling the the anxiety there in California. And we we love you guys. We're praying for the ones on the front line there and the healthcare situations there and the ones serving in the grocery stores and restocking the shelves and we're praying for all of you who are inside with your kids and yes. really feeling your pain right now and praying that Jesus just breaks in and and helps you in this um, super challenging time but just our our prayers are so going out for you guys right now thank you Heidi Heidi what can we all in America be praying for you guys in Mozambique and for Iris in Mozambique and for the people of Mozambique um, How can we pray? Right now, I think the biggest thing you can pray is that we would all fix our eyes on Jesus. Yeah. Wow. That we would so, so fix our eyes on Jesus. Um, it's all hands on deck. It's 911. And it's, it's in Mozambique right now. I mean, people can check out a New York Times article. They can just see what's going on just in, in our little yeah. part of the world in, in northern Mozambique, but it, it's really about all of us so connecting to Jesus right now, so connecting to his heart and his love, so holding on to the arms of the Father and being filled with Holy Spirit. It's not business as usual. The world is not just going to bounce back into the same spot. We, we are moving into a, a new place. It's a new era. It's a new, it's a new way of doing things. And the only possible way for us to ride this wave, and, and it is a wave, it's a tsunami wave, is to put your hands in the hands of the Lord now and step right on his feet. Yeah. It's to be connected, so connected to Jesus. He's, he's just... He's going to cause you to be able to ride this wave. Hold on to the hands of the Lord now and step right on his feet. Mm -hmm. And so whether you're in Mozambique, northern Mozambique, um, whether you're, you're feeling just terror for your own family, uh, maybe your grandparents, uh, even just having that challenge of having everybody in one place feeling cooped up, or whether you're in northern Mozambique and and you're getting, you know, you're hearing messages on your phone, gunfire, whatever situation you're in, the answer is always the same. You know, we, we trust in him. We don't yeah. trust in our own strategies. We don't trust in all our own ideas. We really press in and, and ask him, what are you saying? What are you doing in California? And, and what are you saying, what are you doing in Mozambique? What are you saying and what are you doing right now in, in my, my little sphere of the world? And, and obviously all conferences are, are either canceled or postponed. The Olympics um, 
today, as we all know, was postponed for a year. So this is a wake-up call. This is a big old wake-up call. Uh, and, and the Lord's really saying, stop for him. He's the one who is the one. And then stop for the one in front of you. Right now, it's Sarah stopping for Nathan, Nathan stopping for, for, for Sarah and me. Stopping for Roland. I'm not supposed to touch him, by the way, but eh, ah. too late. And, and what, do you, what do you think, Roland? What, what is your advice for people right now in California who are just in their homes and they can't, they can't get out? And... Well, first of all, are they in their homes? The big complaint I hear online is that most, a lot of people are at the beach. <laughs> that has still been a problem. And 20 cars are parked out in front where they drink through the night, thinking that young people can't be hit with this virus. Mm -hmm. And as they're totally frustrating the government because a lot of people aren't taking this seriously. So you would, you would so. counsel them to go in and go inside, seek the <laughs> Lord? I think that's pretty <laughs> obviously. <laughs> The most basic thing you can possibly do is not go outside of your house unless you have to. <laughs> and what that's, can you do in there? That's, you can not, that's not spiritual. That's not some mystical, uh, you know, godly secret. That's just common sense. But a lot of people aren't, aren't just aren't doing that. You know, I mean, that's yeah. happening in London. That's happening in New York. So the first advice is let's not get so spiritual until we actually take this seriously enough to do the basic things, which is don't spread it, don't go outside, don't go places, don't hang out with people. And, uh, and what's the opportunity? The opportunity is we can seek God, we can um, connect mercifully, we can still connect online. We never know, you know, Sunday we didn't have electricity or water. We can connect with people because uh, without electricity, we can't get online uh, because there's no signal and all. So, so we can, some of you are like, well, we'll trust for the online connections. But, but for us, you know, those were completely gone on Sunday. And then Monday, um, there was this, this very challenging thing that, you could read about if, yeah. if you're interested. Yeah. I've, been reading, um, but, I've been reading New York Times today about what's happening in northern Mozambique. And yeah. Yeah, where, where we, you know, we live in northern Mozambique. Yeah. Oh, thank you for praying. But yeah. we, we want to call people during this time um, to really seek, seek the Lord. And yeah. I was, you told me about like what Brock was doing. That's my son in love, is yeah. dear to yours. And, um, there with Crystal and the kids and like what what are they doing? I love that they're just worshiping from home, you know. And all we might not all be able to sing like um, like somebody else like they can or play like they can, but we can all we can all pray. We can all get in the word. We can all just as a family and our own little family units really worship. Today I was like. On online with um, Carol Arnott, who I just love and is a dear friend of mine, and and we were just soaking. I mean, we were just in the presence of God, wow. just in the peace of God. Just you know, we can we can work on how we're gonna relocate people and how we're gonna take a five thousand care of five thousand people when the schools are shut and our programs are all shut and we can talk about that and we can spin out again about that or we can just go into the heart of God yeah. and we can just get into the peace and the shalom of God and hear what Holy Spirit's saying. And, and right now, quite frankly, he's calling his people to slow down. Mm. Uh, just go right on down. You, you just can't fix this. You yeah. need to just slow right on down. You can't just uh, control this. Uh, release control to the Lord. Get into his presence. Get into the word. And if you've got kids running around in your home, you can't probably can't just sit there and, and just read scripture for a couple hours. You know, you're, you're having to prepare food. You're having to... It sounds like you know all that is from personal experience. Uh, recently with grandchildren, Heidi? 
Yeah, yeah, and just my own kids and uh, grandkids and the adopted kids, and so a lot of had seventeen kids. Seventeen, wow. two natural born, oh, as you okay. know. <laughs> um, but I just, I just feel like this is you can't all like just sit and soak for hours right now, but you can put on worship music Come and on. you can you can put on the God and on audio and you can instead of just listening nonstop to sin and freaking out, um, instead of just I mean you can yeah, listen for a little bit, know what's going on, but Keep yourself fed with the Word of God. Keep yourself fed and keep yourself full with worship. Let the atmosphere of worship, let the atmosphere of the Word of God fill your house. Yeah. And that's, yeah. you know, that's something I really want to encourage you all. And yeah. my family there in California, all of you guys. Yeah, we, um, you know, I was thinking about this yesterday and just how, you know, we lived over there in Mozambique for a season with you guys and helped run the harvest school and just um, had a beautiful season learning in Mozambique with you about revival and learning from the poor. And, um, and sorry, thing just popped up on the screen, but um, we learned so much. And I've been thinking about that time in facing this current pandemic because, um, you know, the level of dependency you live in when you live in a country like in Africa, where you live in Mozambique. And, you know, we were talking to some of the missionaries just there on our staff Zoom call with you guys, uh, James and Jess, were just saying, you know, we live with cholera outbreaks and malaria and life-threatening disease is, is around all the time in, in normal day life when you live in Mozambique. You know, we, there's so many crises crises and challenges that you face regularly <laughs> regularly it's it's part of life and actually it drives you to live in a place of such great dependency mm -hmm. where you know you get up every day knowing i mean it's one of our core values roland you can't get through any day without the miraculous you know that we depend on we depend on the supernatural miracles and, and miracles daily and it's interesting when the Western world is sort of brought to a halt with this pandemic, um, so many places that we don't usually experience the threat of, um, you know, life-threatening disease and we don't usually have these outbreaks and things that we're dealing with in everyday life. It is actually one of the good things I can see coming out of it is we are, we are forced into this greater place of dependency that you often live with when you're on the mission field in the third, in third world countries, um, that it's, you know, amongst the poor, that you do live with this greater level of dependency daily. And we're feeling that. We're feeling that in the West. We're feeling a greater level of dependency as we hear the news and the reports, and it's very sad what's going on in Italy and in parts of the U.S., have really become um, the numbers are skyrocketing with the disease yeah, and the are. deaths and it's very sad and yet it forces that deeper place of dependency that we feel like we learnt so much about from our season with you in Mozambique and so Roland what are you what have you learned what's one of the things you've learned with facing continuous crisis and things like malaria I mean you've We've all had malaria. You've had malaria. It nearly took your life. Um, what do you? What did you learn in the midst of crisis um, that you that you can share with the world at this point? I nearly died of malaria twice, but the doctors didn't tell me I was almost dead. You know, they told they my told wife. Me. <laughs> they didn't tell me that they'd given up on me and my you know, liver and everything was gone, and I'm ready to go. I, I thought it was going to be fine. <laughs> it was cerebral malaria, so that gives you a heads up on. But there's there's a lot of things to think about. There really are a lot of things to think about, uh, approach God about, uh, meditate about. Uh, it's always things to learn. 
it's, it's not just basic and simple. It's, it's not just a matter of how are we going to get a miracle or, or what do we need to depend on God for. There's actually lots of things to think about. Now, when, when crises happen and, and things change in your life uh, that you can't handle or couldn't handle before, it becomes obvious that something has to change. And when we're talking about our relationship with God and the unexpected happens and we're out of control and we're confused and shaken up and all this, we need to realize something needs to happen between us and God. That something has to change. God is the big deal in our lives. He's not just here to fix things for us. <laughs> he is here to be our life. He's the reason for our existence. He's not just a help it person that, that comes to rescue us and make our plans succeed. <laughs> we go to him to even find out what plans we should have and what is life made out of. And, and these are huge questions that could just occupy us the rest of our life. But these kind of crises, to me, point us in this direction. Right. What it means to know God better. He's, wow. he's, 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 he's not just a, a, a powerful a miracle worker that, you know, fixes things for us. He's, he's somebody to know and enjoy way more than we can possibly imagine. Mm. And he, he is somebody to share life with. And I don't mean just the victories, but also the sufferings. Uh, that's one critical way in which we get closer to God. Jesus suffered a lot. He was rejected a lot. He went through a lot. He didn't even have a place to lay his head when he was on earth. His head was somewhere else. He said, his kingdom is not of this world. Uh, and we need to know what that means. And what does it mean to, be, to get close to him? Well, it also means becoming like him. The fellowship of his sufferings, uh, uh, the way in which he did exactly what he, his father told him to do instead of him having all kinds of ideas of his own. There's many, many ways in which we learn from Jesus' life wow. what our life should be like. Oh, I, we could just go on and on and on. These crises just point us to the fact that things need to change. We really need God more than we thought. We need to know him more than we thought. We can get closer to him than we ever thought in many more ways than we ever thought. Come on. And that's the direction we're going. It's toward him. We, we are going in a direction which is not just fixing everything around us. It's Jesus is where we're going. And that, <laughs> that's an infinite statement. You know, we're going to spend the rest of eternity getting to know him better. And uh, if these sort of crises don't change us, then we've blown the opportunity. You know, the, the, wow. the, the, whole point, the whole point of these crises are lost. Wow. But there's, a, there's a reason for them. These things come so that we might get to a better place in him, a better relationship. Wow. That's your, great, yeah. Roland. That is, that is so encouraging. Thank you. Thank you so much. Your, your understanding and teaching, Roland, on suffering and understanding the need to be willing to suffer in the Christian life has helped us so much in our walk um, as our spiritual papa. You have really given us, and Heidi, you've really given us a lot more courage to face the things we have to face and to not go into questioning God or questioning his love for us or um, like to understand that we have to be willing to suffer and um, and the examples of your life and the example say it all. that you've not shied away from you've not you've not I feel like we can be weak in our Christian walk when we don't think there'll ever be a hard day or we think that the you know as you were saying Roland that the, his purpose is to just make it all go away and make it all easy and and yet he does do something in our hearts when we when we go through these trialing times he does I've, I felt like he was even showing me we were praying about whether or not to have our um, Iris Los Angeles gatherings um, here in LA oh, yeah. when the Two coronavirus ago, yeah. started and before they'd shut down the whole city. And I felt the Lord say to just honor what the LA mayor had asked and he'd asked people to not have gatherings. So we just felt, you know, they haven't made it like 
law yet, but they're asking us. And so we thought, well, we honor, we honor the government of the land and we, and we cancel it. And I was praying and I was like, I just don't want there to be any fear, Lord, if you want us to meet. And then I saw, I instantly saw someone praying in a closet and I, in China, and I felt like he said, Sarah, um, people seek me alone all the time in China, in closets and in isolated ways. And there's no complacency in my bride there, that they actually know me intimately. And then when they get to come together, it's, it's a reward, it's a, it's a gift that they get to be with the body, but they actually know how to seek me and find me. And I felt like he even highlighted the scripture to me. It says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It doesn't say come, come to, to a meeting. <laughs> it says, come to me. And, and he really started to speak to me. And he said, I'm dealing with this issue in the Western bride where, um, you don't know always how to come to me. You're good at coming to a meeting. You're good at Conference. coming to something corporate and, and getting the breakthrough through being in a meeting where others are praying with fervent prayer and others are declaring and decreeing. Or you're riding a wave. Really, or hey? you're, you're riding that corporate anointing of faith. But actually, I'm calling my Western bride to develop maturity in their individual walk and their faith, even in the midst of suffering, even in the midst of what we don't understand, that our hearts would really know him. And it was amazing. I, I started to feel like he said, you know, a disease, the enemy's tried to send a disease or a disease has come out of China, but I'm sending a move of my spirit to actually draw my individual people into intimacy, into a, a, a maturing in their faith, walk and journey with me. And I feel like that's really, really what you and Heidi, uh, Roland and Heidi, you've, you've helped, you've helped us understand at least the beginnings of a value for that. This is about a journey, a personal journey with our Lord and savior, with our, um, with our Lord Jesus. And Heidi, you, I mean, you, you say it best. Oh, we lost. Oh no, the light just went out. Oh, we're back. Okay. Look at oh, good job, Pop Roland. Come on. Roll you know how to fix things. <laughs> yes, I'm in control. No, internet just <laughs> went off no, and I, came back. Here, here's, here's, you, let me uh, just throw in a little tiny thought. Book two. Yes. There's nothing like cyclones and terrorists and diseases to make me realize without a doubt that we are not in control of anything. <laughs> I personally don't feel in control of anything at all, not even one tiny little thing. And if, and if I can do anything that's fruitful or whatever, I realize that's, that's God in me. Yeah. And that's, uh, now, intimacy, for example, we use that word all the time. We use the word constantly. We, we need more intimacy. But what I'm interested in is what is, 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 is learning about that. What is it exactly? Can we talk about intimacy? Not just the word, but really get into it. What is it really like to know him, hear him, converse with him, get understanding from him, get, a, get joy from him, get peace what what is it what are those things like how do they come what does it take one thing is a lot of time a lot of time alone uh you know i, I i've known for some time but you know, i just keep learning uh when revival hits the best part is not the meeting it's you and him when you get home and you're alone it's it's monday morning when you find out what you really have between you and the Lord. Wow. It's um, between the conference meetings that you find out what, what you really have. Uh, now, Heidi had her 40 days in the desert, you know, and she's been gone for quite a long trip, and I've been alone here in this big house by myself for weeks and weeks and weeks. And yet, these turn out to be the formative times, the best times. But I do trust his methods. It comes from giving him credit and, and not underestimating him and totally trusting him, trusting his sovereignty, 
his ways, his character, his long-term eternal purposes. And uh, I just feel like I have a lot to learn still. So that's where I am. <laughs> we love you, Roland. Oh, Roland, thank you. Heidi. So encouraging. So encouraging, Roland. I, if you're just beginning, I don't know where we are. We're somewhere in embryo status with our walk with the Lord. Um, but Heidi, you you talk about intimacy unto fruitfulness probably as much as you talk about anything, um, any of your core messages messages and revelations. And um, what do you do in the midst of crisis to keep the peace and the joy, to keep that at the forefront in your relationship with the Lord? How do you... Heidi, how do you do it? How do you, I mean, we've watched you in many intense moments um, just maintain that peace and that joy and that focus, all eyes on Jesus. And um, what, are, what are some of the ways that you've learned how to do that? Well, I really, I really try to focus on, on him in the midst of it. I pray in the spirit a lot. Like I pray mm -hmm. in the spirit. Um, night and day and day and night and and I love to worship just worship and because a lot's going on like every single little moment I have a little pause between meetings and even now there's lots of meetings they're just all online just just um, getting into the word like what is what does the word have to say about it how can the Lord reveal his heart through his word and and just keep hearing put you know keep the love on yeah uh, when you get agitated um keep the love on and wow it's good I'm, it's really good i'm learning to listen you know, learning to listen and pause <laughs> um but i i would just i want to read a scripture and yes and pray it's just, uh, it's a great one right now from 1 Thessalonians 3.16. Rejoice always. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right, Jesus. Um, what's going on right now, Lord? Uh, rejoice always. There's the word. Rejoice always. Pray continuously. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So, Lord, here we are. Um, we want to pray continuously, God. Just come, sweet, sweet, sweet Holy Spirit, and break in on people all over, Lord, all over that are watching, God. Um, especially right now, God, as people are suffering in California, they're suffering in New York, they're suffering in Washington, they're, they're suffering, Lord, in the Western world. And God, I just ask Jesus that you would come and and you would bring you would bring your presence in the midst of it god that you would just come with your love and your power lord that people would be your hands extended that each one of us would be empowered by you holy spirit that we would know what to say lord that we would have compassion that we would have mercy lord that we would just that we would just do acts of loving kindness, Lord, and that we would be so deep inside your heart that we would not be moved in the midst of the shaking. Comfort your people, God. I ask for supernatural protection on the healthcare workers, God. Supernatural protection on everyone involved, Lord, as they're cleaning up waste, as they're as they're tending to the sick, as they're as they're creating tests, and and um, as they're doing the most amazing things, would you just be with them, God? Protect them, Lord. Be a wall of fire around about these healthcare workers, Lord. These these amazing servants that are just giving and giving and giving. Would you put your love in them and cause people to be kind and generous and thoughtful towards them. I pray, Lord, for those that are just in the grocery stores, um, stocking the shelves and 
and checking out people, God, that they would be comforted, that your people, as they go and buy groceries, or even if they get sick and they're in those hospitals, God, that, that there would be so much glory on them, so much kindness on them, just the love, the smiles, the, the grace, that they would just so be filled with supernatural love that people would see what it looks like to be someone who believes yes, and lives. God. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yeah, just you guys go, just pray, just shana masaya. Yes, yeah. God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. God, we just really just ask you, we just hold up Mozambique and Heidi and Roland and the whole Iris family there, God. We just ask for your mercy in this time and we just ask for eyes to see and ears to hear that that people will see the opportunity that this is to draw closer to you and yeah that that opportunities will not be missed in this season god we just thank you for great supernatural provision god and supernatural joy from heaven that in this time that sharing and caring will be will just rise to the surface that people will share and that things miracles will take place as people share that things will multiply and and god will see your hand in spite of this disease it will see your hand of blessing coming in ways we never expected or thought it could so we just release your grace and your mercy and your provision over Heidi and Roland and all the Irish in Mozambique and all the Irish bases around the world, God, in every country where we are, God. So we just thank you, God, that we don't miss what you're trying, what Roland was talking about. We don't miss what is in this season, the goal that you're trying to discover, that you've given us to, to find in this season of a deeper uh, relationship with you what is our relationship with you god in this season and that we will go deeper and know you more god yes god. thank yes, you god. Jesus. thank you god thank you jesus yes thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus and thank you that we're all in this together god thank you we pray it's yes. we pray for the world we're all the world is experiencing this yes. together at the moment this has never happened in my lifetime before and then mm. we're praying for a common experience that's happening so yeah mm. thank you god that we this is your world we say this is your world we are your yeah. people and yeah mm. have your way with us god have your way yes, yahweh god. your way yahweh Whoa, yes, in God. Jesus' name. Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. I ask for mm. mercy, Lord. Mercy, mercy in the storm, mercy in the shaking, Lord. I ask for mercy that you, Lord, would have mercy on us, God. Would you just take away anything and everything inside of us corporately, inside of us individually, Lord, that yes. doesn't bring pleasure oh god just just forgive us lord our sins uh, and cause us to forgive those who have sinned against us oh god mm -hmm. lord i ask for great grace our father who art in heaven holy is your name your kingdom oh, come yes. your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses is we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation oh god lead us not into temptation for thine is the power and the glory and the honor forever and ever amen and amen, amen. wow amen. hallelujah so Thank you. Thank you so much. How late much. is it there? It must be. Is it past midnight yet? Uh no, no. It's just about ten. It's early still. Here's ah. a thought. I don't know if you can edit it in and use it somewhere else or whatever. No, we're still going. We're still we're kind still of rolling, it. rolling. We're rolling, rolling. <laughs> but you know, our second core value out of the five, you know, that we've been talking about for years, which is that we depend on miracles. And that's a fact. We, we depend on everything, on miracles for everything. I mean, wow. we don't just pray for occasional miracles when somebody's really sick or something. Absolutely everything is under God's control and is a miracle. There's, there's no chance. There's no accidents. There's no uh, – everything is a miracle. 
that we depend on God for every, every, every tiny little thing. Now, in studying the lives of great people who have uh, been extremely anointed with the presence and power of God, like Sadhu Sundar Singh, for example, in 100 years ago, or even people we know now, like Sapresa Satoli, you know, in South Africa. Yep. Papa Sapresa. What I notice about these people and how I feel myself is that even though we depend on miracles for everything in every possible way, there's no way we can get through this coronavirus, for example, without the power of God. Uh, we, we need him uh, for, to protect ourselves, our children, our friends, our ministry, and, and for anyone we care about, which is everybody. We absolutely need God's power in every possible way. We must have the miraculous power of God in our lives. This is, we're not cessationists even to the slightest, tiniest degree. We, we, like, like Paul said, the kingdom of God is a matter of power, not talk. We, we don't talk about these things. We need God's power all the time. Whoa. Just, just talk is not going to do it. But I say all that to... to emphasizing the fact that we depend on miracles for our very lives and our joy and for our life, but they are not our God. Power is not what we love. Yeah, absolutely. And what I've noticed about these, these great people that I mentioned is that they never called themselves miracle workers. They never called themselves faith healers and miracle workers and, and and, and they never promised, we can equip you with great power. And this is why you should come to our meeting, you know. They never talked that way. Jesus was always the only thing they talked about. Jesus was always the point of it all. Relationship with him was always the point. Not his power. Not his power. Not the miracles that they were famous for. And I'm talking about people who were delivered from the most extraordinary circumstances, the most incredible persecution, the most incredible cruelty, the most incredible danger. Surpraiser, for example, in the Civil War, and Sadhu Sundar Singh went in Tibet when they, they, they subjected him to the most incredible tortures you can possibly imagine. Oh, and the ways in which they would get delivered just like we need to be delivered now from coronavirus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But they did not want to be talked about as miracle workers. They did not want people flocking to the meetings to get more of them. Wow. That was not their message, not their approach, not their attitude toward God, not the way they ministered. It was not what sustained them. It's not what gave them joy. It's not what they focused on. It never was. Jesus was. And that's all I have to say about that. Like, for us, God. <laughs> Amen to that fair prayer. Say, I. Come on. We love you, God. I love that. Thank you, Roland. Thank you, Mighty. So nice to guys. get time with you and pray and talk. And we're going to do some more of these just so we can yeah, give my time. love to the kids. Give my love to the kids and your mom yeah. and dad. We yeah, we love you guys. We'll talk soon. Okay. I'll call you. Talk soon. Okay. Yes, bless you. Ciao, ciao. This podcast is presented by Iris Global. For more information or to support the work of Iris Global, please visit us online at irisglobal.org. Or to speak to someone at Iris Global, call our office at 530 255 2077. Iris Global is an international Christian mission and relief organization with a focus on working amongst the poorest of the poor and those most in need. We hope this podcast has inspired your journey. Thanks for joining us for Iris After Hours.